Welcome to Om Julibia TV, your trusted destination for authenticated updates, informative and analytically based content. I trust you are having an exciting and fulfilled day today ahead of the meeting between the UAAG country director and the NGO partners. Today's session is quite an important one, especially as it aims to address two critical subjects of urgent NGO and subscribers' importance. The first concern is the circulating voice note holding that the CEOs are not going to disburse the UAAG grant, that the grant is going to be disbursed centrally. Then the second subject we will address is the essence of the meeting tonight between the UAAG country director and the NGO partners. Thank you for having me on Om Julibia TV today. I'm the CEO of this channel. Let's quickly address the first concern of this session, which is the meeting between the UAAG country directors and the NGO CEOs tonight. Across the WhatsApp and Telegram platforms, we are seeing agitations and resentive voices from the audience of grant subscribers asking why there should be a meeting between UAAG and the NGO on the 28th of February rather than a disbursement broadcast. Everyone expects that the meeting schedule should hold that the country director is going to give a broadcast tonight. Going by the previous experiences, some are already saying that in every month and when you see meeting being scheduled between the UAAG and the partners, it is obvious there is not going to be disbursement in that month. A few weeks ago, the AGPGN and the country director in a joint meeting on Telegram assured the grant subscribers to uh, maintain peace in the ecosystem and shut down platforms that disbursement is definitely going to take place in February. Now, today is 28th of February 2024. There is a meeting. Is it going to be the same meeting of adjournment of disbursement or there is going to be a broadcast? I think since the meeting is taking place tonight, everyone needs to be patient and hear directly from the country director of UAAG. Since we don't actually can predict his thought or intent in the meeting. It might actually be a broadcast that is coming to deliver to the masses. Already uh, this month we have seen the clearance issued to NGO CEOs in the app. We have seen several developments all channeling towards disbursement. The meeting for me I think aims at addressing issue concerning the MOU signing by the NGO CEOs, then the disbursement template, the disbursement template which you as a grant subscriber will hear for the first time the entitlement of uh, the NGO, the grant bundle heads and the beneficiaries. It might even be when the country director is going to give a broadcast, we never can tell. So let everyone be patient until after the meeting, we can then complain of why there is delay or shift in the disbursement as was long anticipated. Patience is key at this moment. Now let's address the most important uh, subject of concern in this session, which is the circulating viral V note of UAAG disbursing this grant centrally. Listen to the V-Note yourself before we can deliberate on it. Listen carefully to this voice note. This feedback is from insiders in the UAAG. That disbursement of this grant will be done centrally. NGO CEOs will not disburse to their beneficiaries anymore. That is one. Two, those CEOs will benefit in the same amount like beneficiaries. If beneficiaries are receiving 300,000 Naira, so NGO CEOs will receive 300,000 Naira too. 
NGO CEOs wake up or you become the heaviest casualty in this grant. How can the NGO of UOG doesn't allow CEOs to disburse? And again, they don't give them the entitlement. They allow them to benefit as mere beneficiaries. You deny them two things. Deny them disbursement and you deny them their entitlement. NGO CEOs, wake up or you become the heaviest casualty in the greedy antics of the UAAG and APGPN. After their whole fight, the CEOs are now the sacrificial lamp. After the whole struggle, the whole expenses, the code banning to onboard in the app, the support, the whole expenses since the era of Sam, Theobald, Telpacon, Golden Bridge, now UAG want to disburse the C to CEOs as mere beneficiaries. CEOs wake up or you become the heaviest loser in this game. You have heard the part that said the grant will be disbursed centrally. Now, let's critically look at the possibility of the grant belonging to a non-governmental institution being disbursed by a certain body centrally. Who is this body that is going to disburse this grant centrally? Is it the CBN or the government? One specific NGO CEO on one of the platforms saying that uh, a government has taken over the grant and will disburse centrally. How on earth can government intervene with the activities of a non-governmental body? We are not actually saying that government doesn't have a role to play in the disbursement of grants or in the activities of non-governmental bodies in Nigeria. But the role of government is purely supervisory and regulatory in nature. Not taking control, not absolute control of the activity of non-governmental organization. For example, since grant is in the vault of the CBN for disbursement, it is the responsibility of the government to checkmate or regulate or appropriate this amount to be disbursed from the NGO account to the recipient account. For example, if the grant is to the tune of trillions of naira and the government sees that if, say, three trillion is disbursed into circulation in a country that is already staggering or suffering inflation, if government sees that such amounts will worsen the already staggering economic state, government can decide to sell. If your beneficiaries are supposed to receive 3 million naira, disburse 300,000 or 500,000 or 1 million or 1.5 million to your recipient. How many recipients do you have? Government will look into the sum of 1 million naira times, say 50 million recipients if it holds an effect or on the economy or it actually strengthens or stimulates production in the economy. That is how governments work to supervise or regulate the activities of NGOs in a country, not taking control of such NGO activity. Again, when we say that government doesn't have control over the activities of the NGO, that again is quite wrong because the constitution of the non-governmental organization is subservient or under the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria it doesn't override or supersede the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria it is likened to a law made by the local government legislative council or the state house of assembly calling for autonomy of the local government, whereas the constitution of Nigeria doesn't permit same. This scenario is likened to the state of the local government autonomy, where local government council made bylaws calling for 
the allocation of council to go directly to the local government, calling for local government autonomy, or the House of Assembly making laws at the state, calling for local government autonomy, or funds of the council to go straight to the council account, whereas the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria doesn't permit disbursement of fund to local government account until the Senate or the House of Rep pass a law that remove the former clause which states that the state government and the local government will operate a joint account for disbursement of the allocations of council. If that particular clause is not removed, is not expunged from the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, then whatever law that is made by the local government, legislative council, and the state house of assembly stands invalid. In this case, even if the UAAG have their constitution to disburse any grant that comes into it, covers to its beneficiary or recipient, their role cannot supersede the constitution of Nigeria regulating the activities of such a grant. Their own constitution doesn't in any way contravene or object the already existing constitutional provision in the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria on the disbursement of grants by non-governmental organizations to institutions or recipients in the country. For example, if the Constitution states that the financial institutions or official government financial bodies shall regulate the activities of NGO in disbursement, Financial institutions like the Nigerian Financial and Intelligence Unit, NFIU, and every other financial institution that must supervise the activities or disbursement of grants, the grants handler or non-governmental organization cannot embark on disbursement of grants by their own constitutionally driven provisions. Therefore, government in larger extent regulates or supervises the activities of non-governmental organizations in disbursement of grants to its recipients. So in this case of UAAG, we still expect there are influence of government in their activities. But going by the already hard beaten economic state, we expect that whatever regulations or appropriations that the government is going to effect on these grants will be to the benefit of the recipient, especially as it will promote the expansion of businesses or stimulation of the economic growth and stability in this period of economic recession or inflation in the country. Therefore, going by the claims in the B notes that the grants will be disbursed centrally, the first question you, you should ask yourself is, who is going to disburse the grant centrally? Because it is not in the control of federal government to disburse grants of non-governmental organization. Government only supervises. Is it the CBN that will disburse it centrally or the NFIU? Because this grant belongs to the UAAG. Therefore, it is the UAAG that is going to disburse the grant. Therefore, the claims in the voice notes that the grant is going to be disbursed centrally for me, it's purely misleading because governments have no control over direct disbursement of grants belonging to non-governmental organizations. They can only play supervisory and regulatory role. If the grant is to be disbursed centrally, then it is purely going to be disbursed by the UAAG. Therefore, the CEOs should discountenance such information as it is purely misleading in entirety and rather wait to hear from the country director of UAAG. It's purely a rumor for now. And if the grant is going to be disbursed centrally, then it's purely going to be carried out by the UAAG or the LGPGN. And I don't see why the LGPGN or the UAAG will bother themselves in taking over the responsibilities that are supposed to be conducted by the NGO CEOs. Meanwhile, there's still a rumor until it is proven otherwise.
on the second part of the B note, stating that NGO CEOs will be entitled to the sum of 300,000 Naira like beneficiaries. This claim again is even more misleading than the first one. How can that be possible? If the UAAG, which we all know, cannot act in a way that bedevils the welfare of CEOs because the UAAG is aware of how much the NGO CEOs pays before even getting onboarded in the UAAG app. They know how much NGO CEO pays to support the UAAG in several occasions. They know how much the NGO pays to board a flight from their respective states to Abuja. They know how much the NGO CEO spend in sustaining themselves, feeding themselves throughout the period of the verification and screening exercise. They know how much NGO CEO pays throughout the era of the Golden Bridge, the Tepacom, for six, seven years, the NGO CEOs have been spending in the grant ecosystem. The, this is supposed to be a grant that helps the NGO CEOs to recover from the fact that the NGO have already lost in the grant ecosystem since the era of the Theobard Foundation. Well, I don't think the All Grant Pressure Group and the UAAG will uh, allow the regulation of the entitlement of NGOs to as lower as 300,000 naira because that cannot even take care of the traveling bills incurred by NGO during the screening exercise. That alone haven't taken care of the logistics expended by the NGOs since the onset of this activity since March last year till date. Again, that is another misleading aspect of the V note that makes it purely fallacious in entirety. Therefore, the NGO CEOs should not take such V note to heart. It's purely heartbreaking. I always advise people don't be quick in believing rumors because lies are faster to be circulated than true facts. It's heartbreaking if that should be a reality. But I trust God this is a rumor and the country director of UAAG will address this fact as it helps everyone to recover from the expenses incurred in this ecosystem since six or seven years ago. Again, on the issue of disbursement of this grant centrally, not by NGO CEOs, we are aware that even in your presence, you present a schedule for, say, an account officer for disbursement. They will still manipulate that list to include their own recipient. And if they have to call on, if the UAAG have to call on NGO to upload their data in the app, what is the guarantee that the whole beneficiary name that is captured in that schedule or template will be disbursed to? What is the guarantee that bundle heads account details who is captured in that schedule and uploaded to UAAG? When the UAAG later download it and present it to the commercial bank for disbursement, that those bankers will not influence, manipulate, remove the beneficiaries or the bundle head account details to impute their own people. The whole activity, if it is true, will sabotage the expectation of everyone in the ecosystem. The whole information in that voice note, if it is true, will frustrate the expectation of so many grants, subscribers or NGOs in the ecosystem. If the bank outside the custody of the NGO are to disburse this grant, so many bundle heads and beneficiaries will not receive it. It will truncate the expectation of so many recipients of this grant because the list will be subject for manipulation by anyone who is going to disburse centrally. So the idea of central disbursement is unreal. Because it's not going to be to the benefit of the masses. It's a way of redirecting back what is meant for the masses who have paid logistics to NGO CEOs back to a certain audience who might have not contributed a dime to facilitate this process. Grant 
and non-governmental activities cannot actually exist without the masses because the logistics that is required to sustain non-governmental organization is generated by the masses. Therefore, masses first in this case. Masses expectation should be considered first before any expectation. If it is the expectation of the government that is against the expectation of the masses, then the UAAG should declare this no to the masses, then the masses have a way of approaching the government to get their expectation realized. If the government wants to regulate the grant in a way that is not going to be beneficial to the masses, let the UAAG come open to the masses, let the masses help them out. In a country where people barely feed in a day, in a country where people who hold businesses are losing their capital because of inflation and high rate of transportation. A government in such a country cannot regulate the activities of individuals who eventually have opportunities of having capital to resuscitate their businesses. So let nobody inform the masses that it is the regulation of government authority. Government cannot regulate the economy that he cannot sustain. Government cannot regulate the activity of the masses that he doesn't have the resources at the moment to help. We are seeing protests by labor unions since yesterday. Our kids are already staying at home since yesterday, especially those who are attending public school. Then how do you expect such a government to regulate the fund that is going to such audience of masses for sustenance and survival? I know issues like this always call for suspension of such activity. If the masses start agitating, the government may call for the suspension of this disbursement, all to their own personal aggrandizement. But at the long run, it will eventually help stabilize the system. If agitation of the masses will call for suspension of disbursement, because it is not favorable to the masses, but favorable to the government, then so be it. But I don't think the government will call for suspension if the masses agitate that paying 100,000 as entitlement for recipient is too meager. If the masses are agitating that 300,000 cannot take care of, if the masses are agitating that any disbursement that is lower than 500,000 is not sufficient to resuscitate the collapsing businesses, then such agitation is worthwhile. It's important for government to listen to. Government will not come and call for the suspension of disbursement because the masses are saying they should disburse between 1 million to 5 million to the masses. Hence, it will help stabilize the economy. Hence, it will help those businesses that are already staggering to stabilize. And hence, it will help those who have kids that are already dropping out of school to pay fees and restore them. Hence, it will help families who barely fit in a day to feed themselves. Hence, it will help those who are sleeping in the hospital without money to buy their drugs, to buy drugs and survive. The government can't keep watching people dying because he cannot provide the resources needed for personal and professional or economic stability. If non-governmental organizations are actually coming out, sourcing for grants, to help stabilize the economy, then government should be whole arms opening to receive and facilitate the speedy disbursement of such grants to the masses. At the moment, like I have earlier stated, every information about that B note is a rumor, is misleading. And until we hear from the country director of the UAAG, such voice note remains a rumor, not a fact. So I encourage every party to discountenance it, dismiss it in a flip of finger while we wait for the address of the country director on this matter. Thank you for having me in Om Julibia TV. Subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Hence, when we provide the next update of this grant activity, you will be immediately notified.